Mike for Wine Weirdos here with Maurice Di Marino from Cone Restaurant Group, managing your beverage director for 20 different restaurants down here, right? Correct, yeah. And these are some of the finest restaurants in San Diego. He also does a blog called Maurice'sCrew.com, which you have to check out, full of information. Uh, excited to have you on the show, Maurice, and excited to get into this 1970s yeah, I'm excited about this. Robert Mondavi so. Fume Blanc uh, out of California, of course. And Fumé Blanc just means Sauvignon Blanc. That's what they called it back then, like a marketing ploy, sort of, right? Yeah, what, what it was is really is that uh, Fumé Blanc is the idea of uh, uh, Puy Fumé. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it really actually goes to the term that of oak, oak aging of uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Right. So they put in oak and gave that kind of smoky character. So That's Robert right. Mondavi called it a Fumé Blanc. Mm -hmm. um, but it has nothing to do with uh, being a separate grape. It's Sauvignon Blanc, which is placed in oak right. and uh, uses a marketing ploy for, for Mondavi. Yep. You know, I teach a San Diego State uh, California history class. Right. And this right here is California history. It's really exciting. Bottle, right? It's awesome. Yeah. Because uh, I don't really have old white wines from California. Mm -hmm. And if I had them, they don't last that long. And Sauvignon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, you drink when it's young. You don't mm -hmm. drink aged Sauvignon Blanc. Yep. This is funky. Yes, I agree. And normally all you can find on the internet about uh, aging Sauvignon Blanc too long is that it will do a canned pee thing. I'm not seeing that here. There is maybe an interesting metallic mineral thing on the back end, but it's not a canned pee thing. It's quite pleasant and, and interesting. I mean, definitely oxidized, right? Yeah, uh, it's, it's oxidized. It's, that's exactly what it is. But you know, it's the, the aroma is this kind of like, uh, I think of it like if pears can become prunes and rotten pineapples, like the yep. core of a rotten pineapple core. Agree. Uh, that's what it smells like, but mm -hmm. it doesn't taste like that. Right. It tastes still, it tastes fresh still, yep. in a weird way. Yep. Yeah, I get the little nutty oxidative character in it, but yep. it's still fresh. Yep. It's yep. really baffling. It's shockingly well preserved for a 45 year old wine. Mm. Mm. I've just had great, maybe I've just had great luck with these old California white wines, but it feels like they made their wine differently then. They made it more built to age, maybe not 45 years, but I've been enjoying them a lot. Well, you're looking at 1970, you're thinking that these grapes, this wine could have very well been made by Mike Gergich, actually. Okay. Because I know Mike Gergich was working with Mondavi for a while when he first got his foot into California. Right. And, uh, and his wines have always been meant to last long. Um, you know, Mike Gergich is uh, famed Chateau Montalena in 1973, passing. Um, in right. The, his, the Paris. Uh, the Paris Tasty in 76. He did yeah. a 73 uh, 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 Montalena Chardonnay, which beat the other mm -hmm. um, French wines. But uh, I think that these wines back then were made to kind of last the test of time. And unfortunately, I don't see them too often. And, right. Uh, it's fantastic to be here today and be able to try this piece of history. Yep. Very cool stuff. Great to uh, share it with you, Maurice. We'll be back with more here on Wine Weirdos. Cheers. Cheers.